So I might have a small addiction problem and its name is Biomutant. At the time of recording this video, which is about 2 days before the game's launch, I've spent way over 50 hours in my main playthrough alone and a lot more on testing out other classes and pretty much everything that the game had to throw at me really. Now this video will not contain any spoilers, everything you're about to see in here are some of the starting areas and missions up to until level 12. Also a big thank you to THQ Nordic for kindly providing me with a very early on copy of the game as it gave me the chance to bring you guys my first impressions of Biomutant. Now everything that you're about to see has been recorded on the PC version of the game on Steam, so all opinions contained in this video will be centered around this platform and this platform alone. And what an opinion do I have about Biomutant, because it is definitely one of the more pleasant surprises of this year, and maybe even the past couple of years if I were to be honest. If I were to condense my entire first impression of the game in just one sentence, that would be Wow, this is so much fun. In fact, Biomutant managed to do a lot of things right, for me at the very least. From combat, exploration, character progression, definitely the visuals department and audio and music as well. And it does so without resorting to endless grind or having you chase a perpetual chain of meaningless quests just to fill a game time spanning hundreds of hours. No, it actually does it so in the 50 to 60 hours that you need to complete the main quest plus most if not all of the side objectives and secrets depending on how proactive you'll be at doing them. It took me just over 18 hours to finish the main campaign, which is roughly in tune with the 12 to 20 hour estimate given by THQ themselves, while the rest of it was filled with the sheer abundance of amazingly done side quests, cool characters and objectives that truly felt that they were the real star of the game. Not to say that the main campaign wasn't good, it's just that the overwhelming majority of the really cool items and rewards are behind these side objectives. And here is where I want to start with the true star of the game as I've said, which is the exploration bits and the gorgeous environment. The game always managed to look great in trailers and reveals, but it's not until you get to play it when you see how gorgeous it can actually look. I really love the overrunning lush forest areas that really open up once you exit the prologue section. There were scenes that I truly had to stop and take in because really the world in Biomutant is very pretty. Now obviously green is not the only color you will see, there are plenty of other environments and biomes in the rather big 64 square kilometers map, but I do not want to spoil anything for you. But once you're out of the starting area, the entire map becomes available to you and you can literally go anywhere you set your eyes upon unless it's the literal limits of the game. The further you venture out, the better the rewards will be, but also the higher the dangers. You'll oftentimes find yourself reaching out abandoned cities or town areas, most of which will have interiors that you can fully explore and you're actually encouraged to collect a ton of the cool resources and secret items that are hidden behind them. I sometimes truly felt I was playing a completely different game, especially in the abandoned city areas, it was almost as if I was playing a Fallout game, meanwhile these abandoned towns definitely reminded me of something like The Last of Us series, and yes, this still includes the dangers that are hidden behind these walls, behind these houses and maybe even underground, so pay attention to them when you're going to play the game. Now this entire exploration bit also further feeds into your character's progression and reward system. As most of the big rewards will be behind exploration and doing side quests, you're also incentivized to find and complete as many of them as possible. The more you level up, the better loot you'll find, including high star legendary and ultimate gear and that in turn will make your class a lot more powerful, a lot more interesting and a lot more fun. There were often times when I randomly stumbled upon a certain character or a peculiar new area only to see a new side quest pop up, at the end of which I would be rewarded with an extremely powerful weapon or artifact. And it was this feeling of satisfaction that I got that pushed me towards finishing every single side quest I could find and scour every inch of the map in 
hopes of the next cool shiny thing. But there is no better satisfaction than getting a high star legendary or ultimate item and then further having the possibility to upgrade this and even adding new parts or combining it with existing ones. Biomutant's crafting system is really one of the best I've seen and the sheer amount of possibilities is staggering. While some of the early weapons or gear mods might not look too impressive since they are low level, many late game ones will make you feel like you're about to create the most ridiculous weapon you could possibly think of. Take this absolutely amazing beast of a fiery axe on which I added two chainsaws on. Not only did this weapon become a lot more threatening, but its bonuses have skyrocketed, especially that armor pierce and damage increase is something that you can look forward to with the crafting system of this game. And really, you have a lot of freedom when it comes to combining parts between one another. You can disassemble guns, you can reassemble them, you have parts for pretty much everything when it comes to especially weapons, from barrels, stocks, main gun, magazine, pretty much everything you can think of and then you can also apply mods on top of them to further increase the damage. It also helps that the combat already felt solid from the first few moments in the game, but it gets better with higher grade gear and higher grade perks. I will say this though, it never becomes too overly complicated, you just have a number of possible combos and types of attacks for each type of weapon, but the way you combine these with your gear, your stats, your passives and your actives will make the combat a lot more engaging, even more so when you add the complete freedom to switch between any weapon type in the game, any spell as long as you unlocked or discovered it, and eventually you can do that regardless of the class you started with. Of course, for min-maxers you will want to go with the playstyle that your class demands, but it's not gonna be as restrictive as you think it is. Now there is no shortage of unlockable passives and active abilities in Biomutant, which the team over at Experiment 101 split into several categories. You have your mutations category that gives you access to over a dozen biogenetic and psi powers along with resistance upgrades. I have yet to find a single active ability that was not useful in one way or another and you will definitely want to use as many of these eventually but you can only bind up to four of these in total so some choices have to be done. Then you have the Wang Fu category that deals with all of the combo upgrades for every single weapon type in the game as well as your passive general and then class specific perks. Now this as I've said will feed into the story, the way you deal with the tribes either by making yourself an ally of them or by conquering them will impact the story and this will also feed into the aura system. You can be either a good or an evil character but it's not like it's going to be done in a restrictive kind of way. More on that in just a little bit but in the meantime I want to talk a bit about the story. Now the story of Biomutant, I'm going to go ahead and say this, I didn't set myself to care too much about it and while it did manage to captivate me at times, especially in the first starting hours, eventually I kind of started losing interest and I mostly found myself fast forwarding through many of the dialogues I found. That mostly boils down to the way the stories are being told in the game, which is through the main narrator that kind of translates and explains what the other species or characters are telling you. It's definitely fun for the first few hours, some of you might even find many of these characters cute, there are definitely a lot of running jokes and gags, but eventually it becomes tiresome, even though there is an option in the menu to reduce all of this blabber. Also having these species speaking in a simlish kind of language, I feel it breaks off the connection that you usually make with a character when it is fully voice acted. Again, you might not agree with this opinion, but it's just how I felt after progressing enough in the game. What I did like about the story is the option, or should I say the options, because you get to choose between being a good, an evil character, or somewhere in between, which is what I feel most of the people and players out there will fall in. Right from the start you have a first option to pick a dark or a light path which already factors in into the type of ending that you will get. Your actions through the game including the dialogue options, if you're seeking revenge or forgiveness and just how you treat others around you will also further sway you in one direction or another. Without spoiling anything this will have an impact on the main story and its ending, there are a couple of endings in there depending if you were a good 
good or an evil kind of character, but I will make this mention, and that is the fact that playing as a light slash good character had slightly better unlocks than playing as a dark one right from the get-go. Like, for example, if you want that levitate ability that is behind light aura, so you will need light points. Again, just like in the case of the previous systems I've explained, this isn't restrictive either, because you will eventually get enough points both into light and into darkness to have access to any type of psi power in the game, though this will be done a little bit later once you accumulated all of these points. But this is it with my first impressions of Biomutant. Overall, I would say that this was a really excellent release and a pleasant surprise from a team of just 20 people. I also think that this will be one of those games that I'll definitely revisit way after its release, also thanks in part to its pretty good replayability. Now, if you're on the fence still, you can still wait for the full reviews from the bigger publishers, but this is what I feel about Biomutant for now. Thank you so much for watching and peace out.